Hello and welcome to the Vine Life Podcast. I'm Tony Clark, your host. And today I have the pleasure of having John Schlitt on the program. And if you don't who don't know who John Schlitt is, he's probably best known for being the lead sing, uh, singer of the rock band Petra from 1986 until their retirement in about 2005. Now, prior to joining Petra in 1986, he was the lead vocalist for a band called Head East until 1980. Now, he's recently put out a new album titled Go, which is described as a declaration of movement that encourages the listener to either move forward or idle in expectation of God's direction. He's also involved in a new venture, the Union of Sinners and Saints, and they have a, a new single coming out April 29th called We Are the Broken. Now, tour dates for September, I think, are, are coming, and I, I certainly want to talk to John about all of these things. But, uh, uh, you know, I just want to introduce John. John, thank you so much for, for coming on the program. Thank you, Tony. Boy, you know more what I'm doing than I do. That's very cool. <laughs> well, well, yeah, yeah, your, your, your website is amazing for this information, so that, that's <laughs> where we're at. I'm glad yeah. something's good about it. Good. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got a lot of questions, too, about uh, some of the things you've got on there. But uh, so, John, I, I always love to start in the beginning. Uh, John Schlitt, as a young boy, uh, maybe as a teenager, what were some of your musical influences that uh, led you down the path of where you're at today? Well, I was very heavy duty in, in vocal bands. Uh, the Turtles, um, um, believe it or not, uh, uh, oh, shoot. Uh, of course, the Beatles. Um, um, oh, shoot. Paul Revere and the Raiders. Uh, I, these are all bands that no one's ever heard before, but they were all uh, a lot of background vocal type stuff. And uh, especially Turtles. They, that band uh, was really had two amazing singers. I loved them. I thought they were great. And then, of course, you know, the, the three chords specials, uh, all those bands. Uh, uh, it just... It was that that '60s uh, '70s band uh, bunch that grew up around the Beatles, and and they were they allowed people like me to realize, hey, I could do music. You know, I'm I took piano when I was younger, so I understood a little bit of it. Uh, picked up the guitar and started created my own band in high school, and uh, basically just that was my that was my music thing. You know. Uh, um, it was fun. It was fun. I loved it. I could always sing. And the truth is, I didn't want to sing. I wanted to play guitar, but nobody else would. So I had to finally be the lead singer and, and it just sort of developed that way. Well, I'm glad you did. You've got, and I'll we'll talk about that in, in a few minutes, but uh, your voice is, is stunning, actually. And uh, <laughs> it, it's, you, it's, it's, it's amazing. And we'll get into that. But uh, what about Head East? Now, the, the band Head East, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of folks are familiar with that band and, and some of the songs. How did you get started in, in, in Head East? How did you start the group? Well, I didn't start it. It was another band at the time. And my, my future wife and I were at something called a sock hop in our little hometown. And this band was playing there. And it I was amazed. It was an amazing band. Their lead singer wasn't that good. The lead singer was the weak spot of the whole band. Uh, he was a nice guy, but a, he just couldn't carry what everyone else was doing. And I looked at my wife and I said, you know what? This ha band has everything it needs but me. And uh, and I'm not necessarily an arrogant type of dude, unless, depending on who you talk to. Uh, but it was just a statement. And so we, you know, I, we, I said it, we left. Uh, uh, it was the end of that. Uh, but then... I was going to, to University of Illinois at the time, and uh, I came home and I was just uh, talking to a friend who was actually at a, uh, was visiting a, a fraternity. And he goes, uh, his name was Joe, and Joe says, John, this band, there's a band, a fraternity band, it's amazing, it's called da da da. I'm going, oh, that's the band, tell that leader that they have everything to make it but me. And uh, he did, and it really, it, uh, it really struck a interest in the in the leader, and he called me. Says, "Oh, really? You have everything we we need, but you, huh? Well, come on!" And it was right, right during the spring or summer vacation, and I went down. I tried out with them, and they totally agreed with me. And we just—it was instant. I mean, the band could do anything. We went from a sock hop band. 
And these are all terms that a lot of people with, that are listening to this have no idea what I'm talking about. But went from a sock hop band to a college bar band almost instantly. Um, covered four or five states. I almost, almost plunked out of college my sophomore year because we were so busy. And um, I had to quit the band. I quit the band actually twice. The second time was uh, uh, I got a double probation. I had to quit to try to cram. It was a long story. And I said, guys, I have to, I have to quit because I promised my parents I'd get a degree and I can't, uh, I can't not do that. And, and long story short, three years later, uh, after my last final exam, I was on stage with them. And at that time, they'd gone through many different phases. And uh, it took about six months for us to finally redevelop into what we were before with one new member. And um, uh, I think two and a half years later, we did our own record called Flads of Pancake for $13,000. And uh, it became a classic. And that uh, it was it really was a, a musician's dream at the time when it first started. God, I remember the song, and I might not get the title correct. Say by life, I'm going down for the last time. Right? Yeah, actually, the official song, the title was "Never Been a Reason," and oh. that was the right. The writer wanted that title, and we all said, "No, no, it should be Save My Life. Uh, it should be anything, but no, it's going to be that." And it haunted us. Even today, because you'll say, oh, yeah, that song that saved my life. I'm going down for life. No, it's called Never Been Any Reason. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. But, again, an amazing song, and, and your voice is, is, is amazing on that as well. And uh, so I, let's fast forward a little bit, uh, okay. John. You know, I, for those that don't know, maybe someone's lived under a rock for the past 30, 40 years. <laughs> But you were you were the lead singer with a band called Petra. Yes. And how did you how did you enter into Petra? What circumstances took place to get you there? Well, actually, I got fired from Head East because, uh, like a lot of people, um, I got too involved in in booze and and coke in my case, and uh, the band had to fire me because I was just I was really apparently going down a road that they couldn't handle, which is funny because it wasn't like they were, you know, uh, as pure as driven snow either, but apparently I was worse than they were. And uh, so I got fired, went on a binge uh, for six months, almost killed myself. And my wife became a Christian that same time period. And it, it's amazing how God's plan Decided suicide was the best answer for me. My wife convinced, actually sort of sort of uh, maneuvered me into talking to a pastor. Walked into that pastor's house with an attitude and walked out with the Holy Spirit. Became a Christian and uh, gave up music altogether. That was in 1980. And by that time, again, I, I thought music was over. Uh, discovered Petra, and because somebody had handed me a Petra record and says, this band sounds just like your band, but it's Christian. I said, yeah, right. Listen to it. Like, oh, my gosh, this is an amazing band. I love it. I love the material. This this is what I should have been doing, but it's too late for me. And that's, that was my attitude. And so being a big Petra fan, I uh, went in and did my, uh, you know, my American dream job. I thought it was a uh, I was finally using my degree as an engineer. And uh, in 1985, um, I'm sitting, you know, basically going, well, this must be it. I've got uh, my kids are going to Christian school. I've got a great church, a great job. I have my first home. This must be the American dream. Uh, you know, this is what God has for me. And God goes, nope. I'm, is, I think it's the first time, man, that second time I ever felt God talk to me. And he says, this isn't it. Don't, don't be, this is not it, John. I told my wife that, and she was sitting next to me. I said, man, babe, I think God just told me this isn't it. And just what do you think it is? I have no idea. About two weeks later, Bob Hartman called me out of the blue and said, John, would you consider singing for Petra? And I said, yeah, let's do it. And he, and he says, don't you think you should pray about it? Like, ah, yeah, okay. But I knew. I knew. My wife knew. I knew. And so we just let them finally discover it. And uh, 
they were in the middle of a fight, finishing a tour. And uh, uh, my birthday, February 3rd, 1986, um, I was in uh, Brisbane, Australia, singing for the first time sober in seven years. And it was uh, it was quite experience. I blew my throat out, too excited. It took a while, you know, after not singing for five years, it took me a while to get back in the groove of things, find the right uh, sound men and all that. And, and the band stuck with me. If I had them, if I had been them, I'd have fired me after that Australian tour. It was terrible, but they stuck with me, and uh, it was God's plan. It was very cool. And Twenty years of amazing stuff went on, and it actually, in a roundabout way, still does. Those uh, the Petra tunes uh, are timeless, and it allows me to do a lot of things all over the world, and and my own solo records and all that. It's just it's been a, an amazing ride. Truly amazing. And and now, John, I'm curious, is is Petra done? Uh, have you guys officially retired the band? Well, officially retired in, in uh, on New Year's uh, 2005, 2006. But we all, also left ourselves open to, uh, oh, you know, revivals or benefits, that kind of stuff. And that sort of swelled up into Christian festivals, especially overseas. We do... We do stuff uh, in South America and in Europe. Uh, we're going to do something uh, the end of September, beginning of October in Germany at, uh, at a festival. And then we're doing, a pair, if COVID doesn't get in the way again, uh, it's very possible on our 50th anniversary, we're going to be playing in Jordan in front of the Monument Petra. Wow. And if we do that, I'm hoping that we have it televised, uh, recorded visually, audibly. It, it, that, that'll be an event. That'll be something that I would really like to see. And if that's the last thing we ever do, that's fine with me. But uh, so we have two, two things on the books at this moment uh, as far as Petra. And so will Petra retire? I'd, yes, officially, yes. But does that mean we won't play together? I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's it's uh you know that for the fans, I'm sure that uh, that leaving that little door open or just that little <laughs> bright spot still available is is very exciting. Uh, but it, it I, I want to talk about the the quality of your music and and just let, let me go ahead and talk about that. Um, throughout your career with Petra and and things you've been involved with, I, mm -hmm. I listen to a lot of music and I I love musicianship. I love yes. great singers. I love musicianship. I love uh, the ability to play together, and 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 it's obvious that that you guys over the years, you've got top quality musicians. And the reason I say that, and I, I'm saying this gently, is a lot of stuff that's put out there in the Christian market isn't so good <laughs> over the years. But you guys are one of those shite, brining, bright and shining stars. Musicianship is is top notch that that can match anyone in the world, any of the great bands, and. Uh, I just want to talk to you about that. Uh, I think you mentioned in one of your interviews that, uh, and I'm paraphrasing here that, but, but God, God should get the best of our abilities, mm -hmm. uh, that the abilities that he gave us, we should, we should mature in them. We should build them and we should mm -hmm. keep getting better. Can you talk about that spe specifically for, for the Christian world, for the, for the body, for the body of Christ, how should we be the best in what we do? Well, when I call myself a Christian artist, First of all, God deserves the best. We should always give him 110% at least. Um, when I joined Petra, well, first of all, I was very blessed to join one of the biggest Christian rock bands in the world. And they're that because they were good. I mean, their musicianship was amazing. Our producers, John and Dina Alfanti, were amazing. Um, I came from the secular world. I knew what to expect. I knew who we were competing against. It wasn't... It wasn't another Christian band. God bless them. I want them to do the best they know how to. But as far as I was concerned, we were competing for the listening ear of the public, not just the Christian public. In fact, in fact, to me, Petra was an evangelistic band. We weren't. We weren't a uh, edification band. We were a. We were a evangelistic band. And to do that, you have to have music that competes with the secular side of things. Now, we were always on about, about one-tenth the budget of our secular counterparts, but we had the Holy Spirit. And that was always exciting to me to watch how God would take that. And 
Um, I have been, I'll be honest, I have been so blessed through my, through my years of music, from Hedy's to Petra to my solo stuff to Union of Sitters and Saints to Jay Seculo Band. Every one of those bands are top notch. And I am very blessed to be able to be part of that music scene. Um, I expect nothing less. I try to give my 110%. If I'm with a band that isn't, that band changes. I mean, I right now I'm I'm touring, uh, hopefully touring uh, my go my go album, and I've developed a band that's that's small, but excellent, and uh, that's that's what it has to be. People would when you're part of the Petra Corps, which I am, people expect that. When my solo records go out, they expect it top notch, and, and not, not only top notch musically, but but the message is so important. As be, being a Christian artist is not easy. Uh, some say, oh, you're a Christian artist. Oh, yeah, that's easy. No, no, it's not because you have so many responsibilities to carry on. You have to, you have to compete with your secular counterpart. You can't preach too much, but you can't preach too little. It's how do you get that message across that, that can reach the unsaved and can edify the saved? That is a tough job. Yeah, and John, uh, and speaking of great musicianship and top-notch top performing, let's talk about your new, fairly new Go album a little bit. Yeah, isn't that uh, funny? It's a two-year-old new album. Okay, yeah, thank you, yeah. COVID. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to ask, did COVID slow you down a little bit? Oh, there? buddy. It came out officially February uh, 28th, 2020. What happened at that time? I mean, the whole world died. The music system just, I had a nice tour planned and disappeared instantly. So uh, we just put it in the shelf in the garage and said, okay, sooner or later, somebody's going to hear this thing. I, I, you know, I just listened to it uh, the last couple of days, really digging into it. And, and, you know, just three songs off the top of my head. One is, one is feel it. Uh I hear a Jimmy Page influence there. Thank you. Uh, the second one, uh, Just Let Go, I Hear a Spirit in the Sky influence, right? And Thank you. Thank where you. Would I Be is like a Motown influence. And, <laughs> and your voice, I have to say, your voice for that Motown kind of sounding song is, is pretty tremendous. Your your voice fits right in there. It's, it's Thank like a you. or something. Well, you know, yeah. it, I love that song. Uh, actually, um, I co-wrote it with a good friend of mine uh, in a little bitty shack. In fact, it was a shed that was uh, rebuilt into a little studio. And we're just having fun. And uh, I, I just love that song. And I asked Johnny, I said, Johnny, okay, will you produce this song for me? He said, yeah, yeah. And it was perfect because he's a he's out of Detroit. He's a Motown uh, fanatic anyway. So we had, I think it came down really, really well. And, uh, you know, I, I hear a lot of other 70s rock influences um, in this album, John, and I wanted to talk to you about that. I, I'm not a musician, but I appreciate good good musicianship. And I, I kind of look at the like the late 60s and throughout the 70s for, mm-hmm. for, for rockers and for rock bands as being the kind of the top, uh, you know, like the, the, you know, the Moody Blues and, mm-hmm. um, you know, some Led Zeppelin. And th- these performers were like... Um, they were creators. They mm-hmm. were innovators. And, and, and they were, your opinion. Go well, they were real. They, they were real. There wasn't uh, the, the technology wasn't there to where you can make a, a sow's ear look like a silk purse. Uh, you had to be there. You had to be real. And those bands that you just mentioned, oh my gosh, uh, the top of the top. Uh, Moody Blues, I used to, I used to uh, do uh, homework in college with the Moody Blues, you know, at, uh, um, and Led Zeppelin, their first album uh, was amazing. It was, it was, it, it, I loved it. I, every song on it. Um, it. But what's cool is they could do it live. Now, the Moody Blues for sure. Led Zeppelin, it depend on what mood they were in, yeah. uh, believe it or not. But um, I got to tour in the 70s with every, just about every major real rock band. And that was that was the world of rock at that time. I'm telling you, and they could do it live. It wasn't there was no uh, you know tracks. There was none of that stuff. What you heard on the record, you heard live. And if you didn't, you were a little disappointed. But they made up with the 
leads that was, you know, it, you knew they belonged on stage. And so that, and I'm glad you say that actually the purpose for the go was to be more seventies because that's what I am. And knowing that I'd never get played on Christian radio because I'm too, you know, I'm, I don't fit their formula now. I wouldn't get played on secular radio because I'm synonymous for Christian. I did it because I knew there were people out there that wanted to hear this kind of music. Um, and it's what I do. And so hopefully they can see the honesty in it and know that I care about those people that want to use this music to enjoy and still be a tool. It, to me, Christian music, if it's done right, like you said, if it's done with skill, can be still be a fantastic tool to be used for friends. Yeah, and 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 again, one of the things I appreciate you, appreciate about your music and other guys like uh, Mr. Elefante is that you know the music is is there. I, it, it's 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 top notch, and, and you're not ashamed to say, "Hey, I listen to this," because you know if you're a musician, you appreciate the the technique and the the how how great you guys are at performing. So I I really love that. You. Now you've got another song on this album. I think it's called "Time Keeps Rolling," uh -huh. and uh, the lyrics are pretty amazing. It talk <laughs> about the clock keeps ticking as the days go by. Um, you, you can't go back at the end of the day. The here and now is your now here to stay. And uh, I'd like <laughs> for you to speak a little bit about this. Does it have anything to you know? I, the older I get, um, the faster it flows. The faster time goes. What is what is the deal with that, John? Why? Well, it's called reality, buddy. Uh, I'm I'm older than most singers, all right. And it's a it's the view of my life, you know, through my eyes. And uh, time keeps rolling. Yeah, absolutely, it does. And I want people to realize: don't ever take your hours of the day for granted. Don't waste time. Uh, because it's amazing as you get older how much faster it goes. I mean, I noticed that when I put up my Christmas tree, it feels like I put it up today, I take it down tomorrow, and the next day I put it back up again. That's how fast things flow. And, um, yeah, that song, and, and uh, Not Dead Yet, that was fun. Because, uh, I mean, let's face it, I'm probably one of the oldest singers, rock singers in the world now, uh, putting out records, and it's like, cool. Uh, and so this is, I'm unique. So use that uniqueness. What can I, hopefully the next record I do, if I do one, won't be so morbid <laughs> and, more, and oh, I'm getting older, you know, what yeah. is it? I feel my one foot's in the grave and the other, you know, I, hopefully I won't go down that road. Yeah. Yeah. Now the, the album cover intrigues me because I'm, I'm a graphic designer. Now the, the, the album, um, you sitting on the couch and you're also in the, in the car, getting out of there can you can you explain that a little bit well it's okay i i tried to uh, epitomize both sides of a typical person you know sitting in a couch that i mean a lot of us do we sit on a couch we do nothing we're comfortable okay i've done there been there i'm done no i'm not done i'm in that car going forward i got things to do and see it's sort of a, a it's both of us. Do we sit in the couch and just lay around and, and wait to die? Or do we get in the car or get in that fast lane and see what's next that God has in store for us? There is no such thing as retirement in the Word. And as long as we walk this earth, we have a commission. Uh, as Christians, we are to tell the world about Christ. Let people know he's alive and well, and he has a plan for each one of us. Uh, it'd be real easy for me to just sit down. And I, I will tell you, it's nice to sit in my chair and watch some TV. It really is. But I really fight that because, first of all, I get out of shape. Uh, and and I don't want that. You know, it's just there's things to do. Things to do. It reminds me of the, uh, the Beatles song, When I'm 64, right? With oh, Paul but I, I wish he's a little bit above 64 yeah, now. Right? I wish, uh, yeah, I wish I was 64. Trust me, I'd be a lot better. So the, the Go album, uh, tell me, just uh, mention, talk to me a little bit about some of the mu musicians behind the scenes. Oh, my uh, gosh. Um, well, first of all, I had I had three producer teams. My son-in-law, Dan Needham, who plays with uh, everybody under the sun. Uh, 
He's an amazing drummer, amazing uh, programmer, and amazing producer. And in fact, he took he produced my uh, uh, grafting CD, my uh, Christmas CD, and uh, uh, my uh, oh shoot, <laughs> uh, the one before this one, uh, the Greater Cause. And because he had done those three, uh, I felt like I didn't want to go totally away from him, but I needed to expand. And because I'm working with uh, Mark Townsend with the J Band, I realized what a talent he is. And John Lowry, he's always been amazing. So I ended up using Mark Townsend and John Lowry also. And the idea of using three production teams just made it better. I had, I had every major, it felt like every major A artist in Nashville working on the record. And it was, it was fun. It was just fun. Well, again, top quality musicians and producers, and it, it's obvious from that album, John. And thank you. Yeah. So, a question I want to ask you, um, it, it, and I've I've heard this asked before of other musicians about life on the road. Um, you know, when I when I go on vacation, I, I'm like, I can I can tolerate three or four days in a <laughs> motel, and that that's about it. I'm ready to get home. Is it the same way for for guys like you that are have been on the road for so many years? Are you you just want to get home many times? Uh, you know, we, uh, we touring us are, it, it, home, home is two places. Home is here with my family and home is on the road. If, if I'm being productive and, uh, even sometimes, even if I'm not, I, I really feel that my responsibility as a Christian artist, especially is to use the talents I'm given to go out and spread the word. I spread the word through music. I spread the word through music. I talked about the music. I I explain why I'm writing this song, why it was. And in doing that, it, it's a it's sort of a a long, long-winded testimony. And so it's where I'm supposed to be, as well as where I'm supposed to be at home. So uh, would I rather be at home all day? Actually, not necessarily, because I feel like I'm wasting I'm wasting time. And you know me with time. Time keeps slipping away. So um, I, I'm i comfortable on the road. If I Now, I wouldn't want to do the uh, three, four months straight type of things. That, that I haven't done that since Petra. I mean, Petra, since Head East. Petra did it well. Uh, Head East, <laughs> it wore me out. So uh, I'm supposed to do what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, well, you do it well. Um, so I, I'd like to also bring up you. You were you you were played a part in Jesus Christ the Exorcist, the, the Neil Morse. Yeah, um, wow, that band the, the Neil Morse album. Now you, you were on the live version. Were were you not on the recorded version? I'm not sure sure about. That. I was on the live version. Yeah, uh, but uh, not video. Well, hold on. I was on the video live, but not the recorded live. Um, that makes any sense. Um, uh, and I was very honored to be part of it. Um, uh, it was just, it was fun. I, it was something unique. And I didn't know anything about the Neil. I, I didn't know about his band because wow. they're, they're gigantic in Europe. And and I just didn't know anything about it. And then I, I went and did the, the live thing. And I was like, wow, you guys are amazing. Where, where'd you come from? So it was it was an eye opener for me, a whole new world that I didn't know existed, and it was an honor to be part of it and uh, honor to work with Neil. He's he's amazing, and uh, so I, I wish that I could have been more part of it, but uh, it just didn't work out. Well, you did it. I did watch that live uh, version of you performing. It's pretty amazing. Uh, well, thanks, you had a great man. cast around you. It's certainly a great band oh, backing gosh. you up there. Yeah, it, it was. It was something. I. What would you think of me as the bad guy? Come on, Caiaphas. Yeah, you you played it well. Thank you. you. It well. I'm afraid it was too natural for me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, excellent, excellent portrayal. Oh, now, uh, I wanted I wanted to uh, uh, talk about your your voice and uh, uh, guys like you, guys like John Elefante. Um, you know, you I don't I don't think it's any secret you're you're pushing forty, right? Oh, absolutely. In fact, that thirty ninth birthday is getting really dusty. What can I say? 
Yeah, but your your voices are still at those high ranges and mm-hmm. and, and powerful voices. And and let me tell you, that's, I was thinking this a couple of days ago, preparing for this interview. You know, I think of great, uh, distinguishable, distinguishable voices. If I'm pronouncing that correctly, like a like a Rod Stewart, like a Freddie Mercury, like a younger Elton John. Those are distinct voices. When you hear them, I, I can tell right away. The same with with your voice. Is I can tell your voice right away. So you've got a very distinct voice, and not not everyone can 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 pull that off. You hear a lot of great singers, but you hear a lot of other singers that sound very similar to them. I don't think anyone sounds like you. Wow. So I just wanted to give you props for, you know, you know ha- having the voice that that you do and and the the power in your voice after all of these years. Well, thank you. Do you do anything special to to keep that? Everything I'm not supposed to. Trust me. I here I. You know what's in this glass? It is ice and soda. I, I'm not supposed to do this, but I do it all the time. And I, and it's just whatever I do, don't do it, singers. And and for some reason, it works for me. Uh, I don't warm up. I don't. I mean, I go out of my way to be stupid uh, <laughs> vo- vocally. So, but it it was really a gift from God and. Uh, and I've always known that um, I could sing when I was five years old. Uh, and so, um, and God has just always given it to me. I, you know, as far as the unique sound, I've never thought of it that way until lately. People have really said that a lot. And I praise God for that. You know, I never thought of myself as anything unique, but I guess it, it's cool. Praise God. I hope, I hope I can use it uh, for years to come and, and, uh, Wow, what what company you put me into? Also, wow, that's a pretty. Well, I mean it. I Thank absolutely you. mean it. You've got a very distinct, uh, strong, powerful voice, and and I know it right away. So I, I hope I hope there comes a time when it can be that can be a real key to open up even more doors. So again, unt- who knows? The the material I sing is timeless. Hopefully, every mess, every sing, song I sing now has a message that's timeless. And if my voice can carry open more doors to where that message can be heard in the future, praise God. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. John, um, you've got, you've worked with a, uh, your band, Union of Saints and Sinners, your collaboration, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Huh? Or, I'm sorry, Union of Sinners. Come on, Tony, get it right. Come Sinners on. and Saints. Thanks. <laughs> uh, what, what about that name? Where did that name the, the genesis of that name, where did that come from? Long story. Um, well, first of all, we're both sinners and we're both saints. We're sinners naturally, and through the blood of Christ, we're saints. And that was the whole thing. We, Billy and I looked for, looked for names forever. Uh, we wanted to do the union. Uh, that's already been taken. We wanted sinners and saints. Well, that was already taken. So, and then we had like a, three million other names and finally, go, you know what? What about the union of sinners and saints? And we looked at it and go, ah, we can get that one. So so we, we felt that that was a, a it, it said what we were about. You know, basically the union of two sounds of of uh, White Heart, Petra, union of Billy and I together. The, it just, it just was, uh, it, it said everything we wanted to say. And you guys are going to be touring again soon. Is yep. that correct? Yes, sir. In fact, uh, in September, uh, Billy called me and says, John, uh, save all of September. I said, okay. Bill, listen, of the team, Billy's the go-getter. I, he is a go-getter, always has been. He's known for that. And um, he says, John, do you want to want to tour this year? I said, yeah, Billy. I mean, it, it's what we do. He says, okay. And, oh, shoot. Three weeks later, he calls and says, okay, save all September. I said, well, Tell me earlier in this, but I might have a couple of shows, in, which I did. He said, so when? I said, we're right at the end. He goes, good, good, okay. Uh, and he's just to go get it. It would surprise me if uh, September fills up and a couple of months after that or before that or after that fills up too. And praise God for that. I mean, uh, any musician that is in this world today of COVID, uh, praises God every time he gets to go out and, and do something like that, you know, uh, I've got a show in May um, that one show 
one shell, but I praise God for it because, uh, again, everybody's scared to death of seeing their shadow now, which is, which I could get political about. So I won't. But uh, anyway, I just, I'm glad that, that there's, there's courage coming out and we can get out again and, and uh, not be afraid of our shadows and, and start uh, praising God together. Absolutely. And, and John, any more plans uh, in the upcoming future with the Jay Seculo band? Oh, absolutely. Come on. Uh, I hope that thing lasts forever. Um, it's so much fun. Um, Jay Seculo is a hero to me. Uh, he is, he has been responsible for, for very law wise, supportive all over the world of our Christian stance. That's a good man. And when he asked me to just jam with him to help him relax, I, first of all, I said, Jay, I don't jam. I'm a singer. He said, we got all the words. We got all the words. I said, okay, all right. And that started that way. And then then he wanted to do a Kansas song. I said, well, why have, I'll just, I'll get John a call, see if he wants to. And so John came along and then all of a sudden we start getting better musicians and the jamming started to get a little big, bigger, better. And and we end up with this super group that uh, is amazing. And it started helping him with, uh, we would do uh, at the end of month uh, matching. It was, it helped him to have fun, but also help financially. And just, it turned into something really great. And the fact that I'm able to help this ministry, the ACLJ, I'm, I'm blown away. I love it. Uh, John does too, uh, or he, he wouldn't be doing it. I wouldn't either if it wasn't something I felt very strong about. And uh, it's just great. And, and the fact that we can play old secular tunes as a Christian band. Now we get, you know, we get the heavy duty Chris and say, how can you call yourself a Christian band when you're playing secular stuff? I said, because I can, I do. It's I'm totally cool with it. And if you don't like it, don't listen. It's just, yeah. That kind of stuff. But, uh, it just shows you that a Christian band can be very, they can be careful and they can just like a Christian plumber can work in a, can work in a secular house. Um, a Christian band can have fun pr- playing secular music. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So John, I've got a, a question after uh, looking over your website. Tell me about your wo- woodworking work, your woodworking abilities. Oh, you, you got quite a, a skill there. You want to talk about it? <laughs> you want my other love, huh? <laughs> yeah, please. Um, when I'm not touring, it, it's always been this way. Um, from the from actually the head east days, not quite enough. No, from the Petra days on, if I wasn't touring, I was working on a house, on my house, because I was like buying any house I've ever lived in, it was the worst house in the neighborhood. And I would spend all my spare time building it up to get it up to everyone else. And I've gone through three houses that way. And uh, when you're doing it yourself, it takes a while, especially the houses that I bought. And I ran out of houses. Uh, you know, it, I caught up with that. So I started building furniture. And uh, and the word got out. And I started building furniture for other people in the industry. And uh, uh, they would show me a picture and say, John, I'd love something like this, but I want it quality. And I'd say, okay, what kind of what kind of wood do you like? What kind of this? You want it exactly like this? Do you want it special? And that was fun. And it still is. And now I'm now I'm just building whenever I get a chance. And uh thanks to COVID, I've been doing a lot of building lately. Uh, but uh it's one of those things where I can still be creative. I'm home. Uh and it's uh it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. It's it's one of those things where I feel like, okay, again, I'm not wasting time. Well, pretty amazing photographs that you have of your work. I'm quite impressed. Well, thank Are you, you. you plan to sell any of that? Or, uh, oh, all that stuff. All, all that stuff was built uh, almost on contract. So it's all, it's been uh, at someone else's home. I don't, the only thing I have, I have a couple of pieces of a, a classic stuff that's sitting in my house. I wish I could give it away. Anybody want a great big cabinet that looks like it belongs in a in a castle? Yeah. You could have it. Just <laughs> give me a text. But um, other than that, um, all the stuff I've built uh, goes pretty quick. 
Yeah, yeah. Pretty amazing. So, John, you've got a 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, mm-hmm. Is it pronounced Build It? Yeah, Build Ministries? It. Build It you slash it, but the Lord do it. And that that is my latest love. It, it's finally, after years and years of being in the music business, the Christian music business, I'm finally at peace of being able to help others in either financially or through my woodworking or through, uh, or through concerts. Uh, originally, actually, it was originally called John Schlitt Ministries. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to go out and provide live music for benefits. And I would pay for the band and myself and do a concert and charge tickets and whatever that ticket price was, they used it for a, a for a project like if the church needed a new uh, uh, roof. Uh, I could provide the music, the entertainment for a concert. And I, trying to sell that, trying to explain to churches, for instance, or anyone, ministries, uh, it was like, hold it, hold it. You're going to play for free and we're going to charge tickets, but it, I'm going... Uh, it was like I was talking Greek to to a, an American. Uh, it just it just didn't work, and it just went nowhere. So finally, I found I ended up with the project of helping a lady redo her home, and it involved it, nothing with music. It was all my building, and uh, I needed a lot of help on that financially. So I realized that. Uh, this was more building than than music, but music. I just had to change the name to Build Up Ministries that covers both music and my building skills, and it's been a, a blessing since. I, I finally finished that project. It was a two year project, and now I'm uh, right in the middle of another thing, which is which I'm super excited about uh, for a lady to provide. It it it's stuff where you see a need. And you're able to help that deed. And it's like saying, thank you, Father, for allowing me to do this. It's a, it's a real blessing. So the ministry is something I'm really excited about, and it's becoming more part of my life. And I, I love it. I love it. Saying, thank you, Lord. How can I help? Someone wants to support that ministry. Um, how would they do that? Just go to Build It Ministries um, or go to johnwschlitt.com and say, listen, I want to support build it. And, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, I've never been able to ask for it. I've never been able to ask for my, I just, it always bugged me. But if, if you feel led that way, go to build it ministries, uh, org or dot com or dot net. And, uh, uh, you almost have to search it a little bit because it's not like I go out and really make it a big deal. Uh, but if, if you felt led on that, that'd be fantastic. We'll work as a team. Please, if, well, I, you, if you can trust me, uh, it's a beautiful way to to uh, put your money to good work. Well, I will put the link below the video as well as your all of your other links, John. But uh, I I can ask for people to support it, and I ask you, uh, folk, folks, if you if you love this, what John's doing, apart from music, support him and and support a great a great cause that God is obviously working through. So uh, thanks, I can God. certainly promote that for you. Um, again, I'll put the links below the video. John, what about your upcoming projects? You've certainly you've got the uh, the upcoming tour. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? Well, let's talk about Go. That con- uh, I want to create a, a, a tour with that. I've got the band now. I did one show in Ohio, and it worked amazing. The set is – actually, the set's pretty tough for me. It has a lot of Petra stuff, all in the original uh, key. Uh, and – Dang, Bob wrote some high stuff. Come on. Not to mention I wrote some high stuff with mine, too. What is it with this stratosphere stuff? But it, it makes me have to get back in shape. But I got a band that's amazing, a uh, small band with tracks, and it makes it sound like a it, – it's it's a full sound. People will not be disappointed if they like any of my stuff with Petra, any of my solo stuff. They'll be very – live-wise, it sounds great. I want to do that. And then, like I said, in September, uh, at least right now in September, we're doing a uh, the Union Center State Storyteller Tour, which is intimate, very cool. 
Billy's able to tell stories about White Hill. I'm able to tell stories about Petra and my solo stuff and Hit East. And Jason Fowler, who's really an up-and-comer, an amazing, oh, got an amazing heart for ministry, uh, is with us. He's an amazing talent. So uh, it, it's an evening of of rock and roll, praise and worship, and stories that you'll never hear except through us. And it's very cool. And don't forget the J Secular Band. Come on. Uh, we need to just go to jsecular.com. And at the end of every month, uh, we, he has a concert, either a collection of the videos we've already done or us doing it live. I think at the end of this month, it'll be a collection again. Um, but we try to do a live uh, uh, thing at the end of the month about every second or third month. And it's, it's fun. But just if you like 70s rock done pro in a live in a live show, having John Elfonte, who's one of the best singers in the country, and me, I, I've been around, not to mention uh, Mark Townsend, who was the music director for DC Talk on the Jesus Freak uh, tour, and John Elfonte, uh, John Lowry, who is the, the sound of Petra keyboard-wise. It's, it's, it's amazing. Not to mention watch one of the best lawyers in the country playing drums. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I was recently watching you guys perform, and I, I happened to look it was some of the videos the, doing classic rock songs from the 70s, and I happened to look down, and it's like an hour and a half had passed. I didn't even realize it, so I was watching all the way through. So, uh, it, The latest thing we did was a Yes song, which I didn't think I'd ever sing, and it turned out pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. I heard it. It's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well John Schlitt, uh, it is an honor that you – that I was able to speak to you today. It's an honor that you came on the program, taking out of your busy schedule some time. So I, I, it certainly honors to you, and I, I certainly, you're a blessing, man. I appreciate it. Tony, you are too, buddy. Thank you for being interested in what I do. It's, uh, it's always an honor to be able to uh, let folks know um, that we're still alive, and we, this is what's on our heart. This is how Jesus is using us. And uh, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you, John. And until next time. You got it, buddy. Let it be a next time.